learned in a special and creative way to you guys. So we hope that we can touch your hearts and you have just a great time. But before that happens, as you've seen in your, uh, Pastor Ron mentioned in our in your bulletin, you see some activities that are going to be going on. We have, uh, God has blessed us with uh, our puppet home. And du during COVID, as we were shut down, he gave us the opportunity to get our the puppet home ready to um, start allowing families, schools, um, children of all ages to come in. All the Sunday school rooms downstairs have been made into different activities. So the kids can come and make a puppet, take it home with them. There's a craft room, there's a black light room where kids can come and try on uh, puppets in the black light room. Uh, there's also another kid city room. So uh, it's just amazing. And if you just want to come by sometime just to go through to see what it's like, you're more than welcome to do that. There we go. We're there every day yes. except for on Wednesday. <laughs> also, um, God has presented us to do gift certificates. You can buy gift certificates, certificates to come and do the, the all the creativity and the uh, things that you can do in the building. And you can get the gift certificate for any amount. It is $7 to come in and go through all the activities and take all your stuff with you. Uh, we have regular ones and we also have birthday ones. We are also doing an adopt a tree where you can adopt a puppet. And we have a tree that has all different um, pictures of puppets on it that you can adopt one, which means you would purchase it and Kingdom Kids would use it for their programs. All right. Okay, thank you, Ms. And you said Easter is coming, right? Absolutely. And Jesus will be alive. He's alive today. He's alive. We celebrate him coming out of the tomb, absolutely. All right, so our Bible point, Miss Lisa, um, is what? Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. Now, there are emotions. So let's try this with me. You ready? Here we go. Jesus', Jesus power lets us live Forever. Trust Jesus. Oh, I think they can say it better than that. Okay, okay here we try it. Oh, you can move out of the way so you can see the sign. All right, here we go. Jesus power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. You're awesome. Awesome. Okay, you go get Aaron ready. And our Bible verse for today is the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. How about that? The Bible says that greater is he who lives in you in, in me than he who lives in the world. So the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And that comes from Romans 8, 11. Okay, and Romans is kind of like this. You're just roaming all around. All right, so let's do the whole thing. Are you ready? Here we go. The, the Spirit of God, God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in, what, somebody? You. Good job. Romans 8, 11. Awesome. Okay, Aaron, are you ready? In Old Testament times, if you remember, the Israelite children were going across the desert to get to the promised land. Aaron, the brother of Moses, had a very special job, and that was to blow the shofar. The shofar was used to get everyone's attention, to let everyone know that God had an announcement he wanted to make. And the announcement that God wants to make today is that Jesus' power lets us live forever. And so when Aaron would blow the shofar, now our shofar is not very big. Um, Jamie was telling us yesterday about the shofars that she saw in Israel. Um, this is a smaller shofar, but it represents the ram's horn. The ram's horn. When God provided the ram for Abraham, when he was about to sacrifice his son Isaac in obedience. 
So the shofar is very important today. Aaron, sound the shofar and invite God's power to come down today and deliver a message. Here we go.
Yeah. Jesus' power makes us bold. It gives us hope, and He helps us to help to pull us through when we need it. Well, you know what? That means that Jesus is everywhere we go. He is never ever sleeping. So our next song called "Everywhere We Go," we know that Jesus is with us, and we have nothing to be afraid of. You can pray to Him. In the car, going on the school bus, walking down the street, wherever. Jesus is everywhere we go.
and she is learning to trust God in all circumstances. Oh, and has he ever taken her on a journey? Oh, <laughs> it's really exciting, isn't it, Miss Kay? Yes, it is, Miss Curly. <laughs> yeah, we're just watching uh, how Miss Lisa is making a step closer to trusting God every day. Yes, and you know what? what? When, when we were supposed to pick our words, I knew God wanted me to pick trust, but you know what? What? I didn't want to say it out loud because... I, I, I will have to admit, I wasn't sure what he was going to expect of me. <laughs> uh, and you can trust God to give you lots of lessons. Yes, yes. 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 Oh, that's so cool. Well, you know, Miss Kay, did, did you hear the story about Joel? Uh, he, he had a brother. Well, I'm sorry, it was um, Isaac. I he had a brother, Joel. Yes. And um, he got sick. He did get sick. And you know, uh, God states that he's with us and can help us. But you know, sometimes there, God has different plans. He certainly does. And you know what? What? Isaac, what, even after Joel went to heaven, yes. Isaac was able to dance and celebrate because he knew that one day he would see Joel in heaven again. So, wow, Isaac danced to celebrate his brother's life who is living in heaven? Absolutely. Wow. Isn't so, that awesome? It is. So, let me tell you today wow. a totally true Bible story. What? Yes, one that I love because it completely changed my life. Your life? Yes, it, it did. It changed you? Yes. And yes. anyone that hears it, I'm sure... It will change also. I can't wait to share it with you all. That's because you're my friends. But you're not just my friends. You're God's friends too. See, God carefully and wonderfully created each one of us. Well, wait a minute. He got some people curly hair. Yes. And some people uh, straight hair. Some people blue eyes. And some people brown eyes. Yes. And some people tall. And short. Oh, wow. Yep. So he made them just the way he wanted them. Yes. The Bible says that God gave you bodies, bones, brains, and blood. God made you in his very own image. Wow. Can you believe that? God created all of them in his own image? Yes. So they are very special to God? They are very special to God. And every one of them is number one to God? Number one to God. Wow. Each and every one of them. They matter to God? Yes. Awesome. Keep so, going. So just take a look at the big heart on the cross. It can remind you of the gentle, soft, sweet love God has for you. He wants to be with you. Wait a minute, Miss Lisa, Miss Kay. Yes, I see this part on the cross, but what does it mean? Well, it represents God's best, perfect plan of close friendship connected with His creation. Unfortunately, it did stay did stay that way. Humans believe. A big lie. God's enemy, guess who that is? Satan. 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 Yes. yes. Those people that they didn't need. Oh, that they didn't need God. Oh. He said, you can be like God. Or you can you can be good enough. Or you can do just enough good things. Or you're good enough on your own. Oh, and so that separated us from God. It did, and you know, and it, we, we talk about like those trophies that were there. Yes. You know, sometimes sometimes we um, idolize those and, and believe in those and, and believe that that's good enough and we don't need God. Yes. You know, but sometimes, sometimes we believe that we can win and earn to achieve enough good things to make God love us. And that breaks God's heart, doesn't it? It does. The lie that separated, separates us from God. All these lies that separate us from God? Yes. Oh, Miss Kay, it must break his heart. It does. Wow. It does. And, and, those, and when we believe them, then we begin, we are sinning and, and we're falling short. 
short of the glory of God. The Bible says all have sinned. Now wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I hear something tear? Yes. What was it? The heart? Yes. God's heart. God's heart is torn when we are separated from Him. Wow. Just like that. But but sin or, or the wrong choices we make it tears us apart from God. It does. It rips our friendship with Him. And it wants to be our friend. Yes, and it makes a mess. It makes a mess. Oh, Miss Kay, when do you see it? Yes. Falling all over the place. This isn't what God wants. No, it's not. Miss Kay? Yes. You know what? One night I realized that I wasn't God's friend. Really? Yes. And, and I realized that I was sinning. I, I was lying. I was jealous. I was, I was doing things that I should not have been doing. And yet I was going to church and I thought I was a good person and that, that when I die I would go to heaven. But you know what? what? That night I made my way to the altar. My friend had taken me to this revival meeting. And, yes. and I made my way to the altar. And, and Miss Kay, yes, I asked Jesus to forgive me. Wow. That is awesome. You know, God gave up something precious. To fix these big problems of ours. And, and, and he continued to work on my heart. Now, he didn't take away everything that I was doing right away. Yes. Because I had to give them to him. And I, I had to confess to him that I was doing wrong. But yes. he kept working on my heart and working on my heart. Yes. And he forgave me in his head. That is awesome. He me. And he, he went, he went to the cross for us. Miss Kay, everyone, you changed my life for good. Miss Kay, Miss Lisa, my heart was changed. And I want to have that close relationship with God. Now that doesn't mean I'm perfect, right? I don't think sin. any of us are perfect, right? No. Right. And I still sin this day. Yeah. I still do things that are wrong. But you know what? God took the mess in my life. He made me a new creation. Wow. Mm -hmm. Just like in Ephesians 2.8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. This is a gift of God. And this is, I think there's a song that maybe if we explain it to everyone out here right now, that they might understand the gift of salvation and, and why Jesus went to the cross. Yes. Yes. How many of you heard of the old rugged cross? Yes. So we're going to invite the children, if they want to, come up and sit in front of the cross. In front of us, you can come. <laughs> bring your hearts. If you have a heart, bring your hearts. Bring your hearts.
cross is an emblem, a picture of suffering and shame. Sometimes we feel ashamed when we do the wrong things or when we make bad choices because we all make bad choices. We can never do enough good or great things to bring us to God. We all sin. The next line says, and I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. Do you guys know what the word slain means? Do you know what it means? Have you ever heard that word? What's it mean? Okay, yeah, you're close. You're close. Anybody out there want to tell us what slain means? Can you help us out? To die for me. To be killed to die, right? <clears throat> so, Jesus was slain on the cross. Kids, let me ask you something. When you do something wrong, whether at home or at school, can you tell me what happens? It's okay. We're not, not going to embarrass you because you know what? I got lots of punishment. When I was a kid growing up, I was nasty. Yes, I was. So what do you think, punish? What happens when you do something wrong? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it's big trouble, right? My brother and I got in trouble all the time. Okay. You guys, do you get in trouble? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How about you guys out there? Do you get in trouble even as grown-ups? Oh, yeah. Yeah, see? Everybody. And you know what? When we get in trouble, we get punished, all right? In other words, we pay a consequence. That's a big word for what we have done wrong. But you know what Jesus did for us? For all of those sins, for the lies we tell, for disobeying our parents, for being nasty to our brother and sister. The mess that we make. The mess that we make. Yeah. All of those things. Jesus took our punishment on the cross to forgive us of those things. You see, look back there, boys and girls. Jesus died for every single person. Every single person. And he died for you. He died for Miss Lisa. Because we all sin. Okay? You see, Jesus took your punishment. 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 Oh, God bless you. Thank you. You know this is going to my fall, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Jesus took your punishment. Miss Lisa. So. Jesus took your punishment. Yeah. And Miss Donna. Jesus took your punishment. Thank you, Jesus. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies I lay down. You take these and you lay them down at the feet. Sometimes we value our treasures more or our accomplishments more than we do God. It's a way to be proud of them. But thousands of ribbons, awards, trophies, or good deeds can't wash away our sins or any of the wrongdoings that we do. We can never do enough good things to earn our way to heaven. As I read earlier, Ephesians 2.8 says, God saved you by his grace. Amen. When you believe. And you can't take credit for this one. It's God's gift to us. We're powerless to save ourselves. Only Jesus can save us. Let us lay down all those treasures 
all those awards, as we did here, we show that God is the most important thing, not those. So boys and girls, you know how our friendship with God was torn apart because of sin, because of those things that we do wrong. The only way to make our friendship with God again was for Jesus to go to the cross. He had to do that. There was no other way to bring us back to God. And you see, the story does not end at the cross. <laughs> Jesus' enemies thought it did. And they took him down off the cross and he was laid in the tomb. And three days later, God's love, his love, all of us, rose Jesus from the dead. He is alive. Amen. He's alive. He was willing to wear that crown of thorns on his head and to bleed. He was willing to be whipped on his back so that you would not have recognized him. He was beaten so badly he would not have known it was Jesus. But he did it for us, mm -hmm. all of us. And he was willing to have the nails in his hands and his feet. All of us. Because it was the only way to bring us back to God. And you know what, boys and girls? He was willing to hang on that cross in the sun for three hours. You know what the neat part is? Those Romans, when, when a prisoner hung on the cross, they would break their bones to be sure that they were dead. But in the Old Testament it says not one bone would be broken. And you know what? Not one bone of Jesus was mm -hmm. broken. Not one. But his blood He was taken off the cross. He was wrapped and he was anointed and laid in the tomb. Three days later, he arose. His disciples and Mary, the women, they went looking for him. And they were talking, how are we ever going to roll this big stone away? I couldn't roll it away for Jesus, he said. No. Could you, Pastor? No. None of us could. God's love rolled it away. And it says, boys and girls, in Matthew 28, let me read this to you. Listen to what the angel said. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come and see where his body was laid. So you see, boys and girls, Jesus' power, Jesus' power. Can you say Jesus' power? Jesus' power lets us live forever. Let's us live forever. When you come to the cross, and you say, Jesus, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. I know I have sinned. But I ask you to come into my heart and to live there and help me to be the child that you created me to be. Guess what he does? He will come in when your heart is sincere. And when your time on earth is done, guess where you get to live? Heaven. In heaven! Forever. And you know what? When we leave the service today, everybody in here is going to get a little crystal stone. Because in Revelations, it tells us that there are columns or pillars in heaven. And on those pillars are precious, glorious gemstones. So we're going to give this to you and to everybody out here to take home to remind you of what heaven is like, your forever home, as you accept Jesus as your Savior and you live with Him forever. We're going to.
to do the song the hope of the cross and we're going to then ask you to do something very special Let's do something. So, Pastor, you may come. 
I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and, and not looking around at your friends or brothers or sisters or anybody, but to just imagine right now Jesus is right in 